Hello friends, Cheryl here with Inked Pulp again, and I welcome you back to another video. I am doing Marguerite Miller's uh, week three challenge today. So I want to get on and record it and bring you guys along with me for the, for the fun. If you are new here, welcome. I am so happy to have you. And if you like what you see and want to subscribe, that would be awesome. And if you're returning, thank you. Um, you know how much I love all my subscribers and supporters. And um, I thank you for coming back for another video. All right. So Marguerite Miller, the uh, challenge is a year-long challenge. And you can find lots of info about it. If you search for the hashtag, um, hashtag 2023CWP, and then the week. Or if you just do CWP, um, you'll get some info. But um, I'm on week three now. And on this, this one, we're going to do uh, something you do at a party, a fruit, anything winter, lines, a shoe, and then the bonus is a ticket stub of any kind. So that's a pretty diverse list, I'll tell you. I was gathering stuff to work on this video, and I thought, holy cow, there's so much, you know, a shoe, a fruit, what do you do at a party? So I hope that I picked out some fun things. Um, this week it's going to be a double spread. The first two weeks I did the, the single spread this week i have enough and there's some big things and i need um, a little bit more space so to back my uh paper or to cover my journal paper writing paper um i have this tissue paper that we're going to use if I can get up. i've had this tissue paper forever and I've never used it and I thought well this might be a fun time to start so what's everybody up to today I've been really having fun in crafting and I've challenged myself these last couple of days to use only the scraps on my desk and then in any of the little boxes sitting at my feet so let's see what we're going to do with this I'm going to put this down um, and the first thing I'm going to do is cut it off this way because I don't need it any longer than this and it's awful big the way it is. So oops, this will work. This will probably be the hardest part of the whole thing is getting this on. I think I'll do it half at a time. So anybody got any fun, exciting crafts going on to start the week? There we go. So I think I'll just put that on and then we'll use that as the backdrop. I've been doing some cleaning projects. I just did a big clean in my craft room before the holidays. So, you know, it's basically clean, but I have all of these boxes of things that, um, you know, just miscellaneous stuff. And I just sort of shoved them in boxes to get them on a shelf while I was cleaning. And I was focusing mainly on the stuff that was, um, I'm going to put a piece of paper behind this. Uh, focusing mainly on the stuff that was on the floor, which was everywhere. I had boxes of stuff everywhere. And now I'm going back through some of those miscellaneous boxes and um, going through them and putting them where they, you know, putting the items inside where they need to go. And I've been finding a lot of really fun things like this tissue paper that I just completely had forgot about. All right, let's go this way. Make sure I'm getting it the right way. It is. Put it just a little bit over the edge so that we can 
cut it off. And you can still see a little bit of the lines through, but it almost looks like it's part of the tissue paper. So um, I'm going to take this ruler, make sure it's nice and flat. Oh, there I messed it up. Make sure it's nice and flat. So yeah, I've been finding all sorts of fun things. Some of the pieces um, in this spread I found as I was cleaning things out. And it's just been a, kind of a lot of fun. And if you're new to my channel and you haven't seen me creating before for my glue stick, I do use the Scotch Create glue. Um, no particular reason other than um, I saw there's there's one well-known crafter who uses it, and she. Um, you know, makes a point of telling people. So when I was getting started, I thought, well, if she's using it, must be good stuff. And I started using it myself and found that I really like it. So that's what I use. Oh, and if you haven't uh, seen it already, I did, um, you know, I do my 12 minute tips where I try to give a, a tip and record it and have it not be more than 12 minutes. This one was only three minutes. It went really quickly. But I did a tip on how to revive your um, glue if you leave it out, you know, without putting a cap on it. It will dry out. And then you, it's really pretty much unusable. Well, I did a video. I have found a way that works for me. I've seen lots of other recommendations like, uh, you know, just cut off the part that's dried out. It just doesn't work well for me. And I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong, but it doesn't work well because the dryness seems to go down deeper than what I can cut off. I'll cut off a part and then it's still dry and I still can't work with it. So I found a method that uh, works for me and it revives the glue stick to the point where I can use it again. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, it's, I think the video before the, maybe two before this one. Um, but anyway, I posted it. I have a playlist for the 12 minute tip videos because I've been doing them for quite a while. I hadn't done one in a while, but uh, I plan to start back again because I have a few things to share with y'all. But that uh, Reviving your glue stick was the, the most recent one I did. If you want to look at that playlist. Okay. And that's been a lifesaver for me because I am terrible about putting all my supplies away when I'm done. When I'm done crafting, I'm done crafting and I want to go upstairs and you know, do something else and I forget to clean everything up. And so it happens quite often that I come down the next morning only to find that my glue stick was left out and now it's all dried out. And that's no fun. That can cause a person to say bad words. So what else is going on? We had some excitement at my house. Um, oh gosh, a couple weeks ago, our furnace went out. And the first part of it was okay um, because the weather had really warmed up here and we were getting days in the 60s. So it wasn't so bad to have the furnace out. Well, then it and, and we had to wait to get a repair person out. Um, 
And then when we got the repair person out, he said, well, you know, your furnace is old and you're going to put a lot of money into fixing it. You might as well just replace it. Of course, they always tell you that. And you think, yeah, right. You just, you know, looking for the extra money. So we didn't do it right away. We talked about it for a couple of days. Well, then the weather turned cold, really cold like down, you know, in the 30s overnight. And holy cow, it got so cold in my house. I'd sit around with the blanket on me and sweatshirts. And it was really bad. My husband finally brought in a portable propane heater that he uses out in his shop. And, you know, he, he wouldn't leave it on, you know, like for a long time because... You know, we don't want the house smelling like propane, but um, he would leave it on for 10, 15 minutes to kind of warm up the main part of the house. I'm going to have to go back and clean up those edges, uh, but I won't do that right now. I won't bore you with that part of it. Um, so we had some heat, but it was really, really cold. And then we had last... Let's see, today's Monday. So last week they installed it. So it was the week before we finally, you know, had the estimator come out and he gave us an estimate and that hurt a little bit, hurt a lot. Um, and we decided to go ahead and do it. So last week they came and put in the new furnace and we decided to replace the air conditioner too because that was the same age. So... Anyway, we had a very expensive week. All right, so the first thing, um, something you do at a party. Well, I don't know about you guys, but when I go to a party, I dance. And so I have some dancing people. I have one that is, oh, let me get up here into frame a little bit better hopefully I haven't been watching I hope I've been in frame so we've got these little bunnies dancing and I've got this couple dancing <laughs> I got this couple dancing but I figured they needed a dance floor to dance on and this is another one of the prompts which was lines so I thought we'd put down some lines um, for their dance floor so they can dance on it. So let's give this a good coating of glue. And I should probably be doing this on a glue page. I know you're, I'm off camera, so you probably can't see this part of it, but I'm just putting glue stick on. And put it down here at the bottom. This paper is, um, it's really cool. It's, um, let me set my little package out here and I'll tell you what it is. Because it's a real interesting type of paper. It's called the Lokta paper and it's made from the Lokta plant and if you look that up you'll see online it's um, it's made in the Himalayas um, and it's all handmade and it's made from the Lokta plant so it's not made from wood necessarily like you think of paper um, and it's very strong it's got fibers and it's really cool. I actually have a lot of extra of this paper. So if you're interested in getting a package, and I don't remember offhand, I'd have to go look at the ones I have for sale, how much they are. But just send me a note if you're interested in the Lokta paper. 
I love to use it. I had one that had chevrons on it, and I don't know if those are all, those may be all sold. But I had the chevrons and then um, this one with the straight lines. I tend to use this one more, although the chevrons seem to be more popular. But this is the one I use most. So let's cut off that extra. And now we have a dance floor for them. Okay. I use this paper um, a lot for accent pieces. Um, but I have found that I really like it. It's heavier than... It's not like cardstock at all, but it's heavier and seems more durable than like scrapbook paper, especially the thinner ones. It it holds up better. It glues really well. I just really like it. And I may, I found this at a thrift store. I was thrifting one day and they had a whole bin of it. I said, oh, I'll take that. And I bought all that they had. Um... And I haven't seen any more since, so if I do see it, I will pick it up. Because I'd love to get some other colors and, and textures. And I just, I don't see it in the, you know, the Michaels and Hobby Lobby and Joann's and places like that. I don't, I've never seen it there. I just, like, I got mine at a thrift store. All right, so we now have a dance floor. Before I put the dancers on, I'm going to go to the prompt that says anything winter. And I've got a couple of cards here that are wintry. And I'm not sure which one I want to use just yet. I've got this one with the bird and the wreath and all the little snowflakes around it. And then I've got this one with the trees. And I'm going to, this is going to be a ballroom scene. And I'm going to put, it's got the strawberry peeking out. I'm going to put this frame around it. And put it up here as if it were a picture on the wall. So I've got the bird, which the background here really matches nicely with the, tissue paper and then I've got this one wish y'all could talk to me and tell me which you liked better because I'm not sure I'm going to leave that and not actually put it down at this point I'll use it for reference so I know where to put my people and I was thinking that maybe the dancing bunnies could go here. We could put this couple up here. And then maybe these guys go more in the middle. And we have both of these couples over here. What do you guys think? Or put the bunnies kind of in the middle. Nope, I like the bunnies over here better. Maybe we'll do this because we could have them dancing up on a another riser and be up a little bit higher. Because this couple can't go too high because of the frame. So I think, I think this is a good layout. So let me get some glue on them. So we've got all sorts of different people. We've got, you know, obviously the bunnies. Um, this couple that I'm gluing on now is more formally dressed. and more like the bunnies as far as that goes 
this couple is uh, is funny. They're I don't know what I I don't know how I would describe them, but um, they just cracked me up. So I decided I would add these guys because typically when you go to a party, there's a real mix of people, right? And if this is something we're doing at a party, there's going to be different folks. But they're all dancing. You know what I should have put in here was something providing the music. But I didn't do that. So we'll just have to pretend we hear the music. All right. Now these guys I was going to put quite high. And I don't know if he's supposed to go. Maybe not completely straight, but a little straighter than what I had him. All right. And I can't find my bone folder, so I'm using a variety of things to use as a bone holder. There's that. And then last but not least, we have the bunnies. I'm not going to ink around those guys because they're kind of black and white on the edges. So I'm just going to leave them the way they are. I thought these bunnies were so cute. As soon as I saw them, I was going through a sticker book that I have. And I saw these and I was like, oh, that's got to be something we do at a, a party. We absolutely have to have the dancing rabbits. Okay, and these guys will go down here at the bottom. All right. Yeah, I found these guys in a sticker book and I put the sticker on some paper and then I fussy cut them out because, sorry about that noise, that is my stand. I'm still working on um, getting my setup just right and it seems like I every time I think I have something, I don't have something. Got a little bit of glue on here, so you guys know me and my glue eraser. Got to get it off. Just like that, it's gone. All right. So, this is something we do at a party. That's taken care of. And... I'm trying to think if I, I'm looking at the colors. What I have, I'm going to put a picture over here too, up on the wall. And I'm trying to see, so the picture on the wall is going to be this shoe. And there's going to be some fruit coming out of it. So it's going to go up here. So I don't know if that's the right picture or that's the right picture. I'm really torn on this one. So let's see, what does that go with? That goes with the shoe color-wise. It goes with the more formal folks. The trees. Huh, I think I'm going to go with the bird. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to, this is um, sticky. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is cut out, there's a bit of extra white strip on here. And I want to get rid of that. There's a little bit around the other edges, but not as much as this one. So I am going to... Cut this one out. And then I'll just ink the other ones. So is anyone else doing the Marguerite Miller challenge? 
I hope I'm staying in frame. I I have got to get a better setup. I have to get one that really helps me stay in frame. Um, anybody else doing the Marguerite Miller challenge? If so, um, are you posting your stuff with the hashtag? Because I would love to go and look at it if you are. Actually, I am going to cut this other one. It's kind of a wide white strip. There we go. And now we have a little bit at the top. I was just going to ink those edges, but I'm liking it better with them cut out. It's cleaner. Um, I can't wait to go and look at the um, the pieces that other people have made because I know how crazy it was for me trying to find things to put in for this week. So yeah, I think we'll have that up there. All right, let's get some glue on here. I'm getting ready to start some other videos on my channel as well. Um, oh, I would love to get your input on a name because I'm really stuck. I'm going to be doing some um, craft sessions like craft with me, you know, live craft sessions um, where people can get on and, you know, watch what I'm doing. And they'll be shorter. They'll I want to keep them to around a half an hour, but at the most an hour. I mean, that's I wouldn't go over an hour, but I'd like to keep them even shorter than that. So What I want to do, though, is at the end of the session, um, take one of the items that I made, if I made multiples, if it was a session where I was just making one thing, then it would be that thing. But I want to do, um, I want to give it away. At least, you know, at least one of the items that I made in the session. And I was going to call it Craft and Grab. So you can craft along with, you can just watch, and then you can grab a prize at the end. But I don't know if I like that name so much. So if you have an idea for that ser a name for that series, um, Craft and Win, um, Craft and, and Grab, I don't know. I uh, make it and take it. That wouldn't be so bad. But anyway, if you have ideas, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to hear what you think. Um, and then it won't necessarily be something I do every week, but I do want to do it occasionally. So, all right. So there we have something wintry. So we have something to do at a party. A fruit is coming up. Anything winter. We have lines. And then we have a shoe. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna move this aside for a minute. I'm going to take this shoe and I have a bunch of fruit cut out. Okay, where'd the rest of them go? I did the fussy cutting off line because I figured that y'all probably did not want to sit and watch me fussy cut. But now I have lost some of my fruit. So let's see what I did with it. Oh, there's one. That, I had one more. And it may be lost forever. I may just have to go with three. But what I thought I would do is put these fruits inside the shoe. I'm going to bring the shoe down a little bit. And sort of make a 
like a still life painting with the fruits coming out of the shoe. Actually, I really want to put that behind. So I thought we'd do something like that. And I wish I could find those other two pieces because, oh, there goes that spring again on my arm. Um, I wanted, I had some leaves that I wanted to put in there. But I'm not seeing them. Hang on one sec. Oh. There's one. And I don't see. I'm not seeing the one that I was looking for. Hmm. Okay. I've lost one. But we could put. I don't know. Maybe we won't use a leaf since I can't find it. I had a really nice one that would have gone off of the cherries. It's a real nice cherry leaf. But this one seems to be way, way, way too big. Unless we stick it. Nope, and then it covers up the then it covers up the grapes. So let's just do the fruit that I have. And if I ever find the leaves, I'll go back and put them in. And I'm sure I will find them because isn't that the way it goes? You can't find something, and then as soon as you give up on it, it shows up. All right, so there's some cherries. And then we have some grapes. And this is all coming out of this shoe. And then we have a little strawberry peeking out there. All right, so there's our fruit. What do you guys think? Oops. Would help if it's stuck. Okay, and then that is going to uh, go on here. And I'm going to have to cut a little bit of that grape stem off of there. Okay, let's glue that down. So these Marguerite Miller challenges are really kind of fun. You can just play, let your imagination go. Like this is, I don't know that this is anything I would have done on my own. You know, put these images together and made this particular spread. But it really gives you the freedom to experiment and know that, you know, you're not going to be judged for it. It's not going in a journal. Well, it is in a journal, but not for, you know, sending off to somebody. It's just your own little journal that you can be creative. And I think it will open the door to more creativity, um, you know, as I start looking at things differently so pages may not be all realistic and you may look at them and say oh i would never do that but i wanted to do something where i could really stretch my creative boundaries I'm gonna... all right so there we go now this is going to be a picture hanging on the other side of the room. Okay, so I have two photos, but I need a frame around this. So what I thought I would do, rather than finding a frame, I thought I would just take this dark paper and cut out a square to go behind
and it looks like we're going to cut here and here. I know that I won't go any farther than this, so we'll get rid of this. All right. I definitely have a space that is too small. That I can tell you. All right. So let's cut my little marks here. We had that one. And that one. So that gives us across the top. And this one didn't cut straight, so let's just. Looks like I didn't have my paper held down and it came up a little bit. There we go. Wow this side as well. I'm not doing a very good job of cutting. I don't know if I'm not holding it down right because usually this paper cutter is really, really good. I love it. All right, so there's that. And then we need side to side. So we're going to go about there. And that's going to make a nice little frame for our photograph. And I want to ink this up real quick and get rid of the white edges. All right, let's put our picture onto the frame. There we go. Lots of glue stick in this one. I brought my tacky glue over to use, but I took most of this or all of this with my, well, it's just paper on paper. I don't think you need the tacky glue. It doesn't hurt, but think you need it. So another thing that I have started this year, and it will apply to this video as well as any video, is um, during each month, I will keep track of who's commenting. And at the end of the month, I will do a random draw. Let's use tacky glue on this because it's a little heavier. I will do a random drawing, and whoever wins will get a Happy Mail package from me. So if you comment, you know, you'll get numerous entries if you put numerous comments in. And it's for all videos, even if it's a giveaway drawing or the free shipping drawing or um, a sale video. If you buy something in the sale video or go in and comment. Um, and I do have a sale video up right now. If you want to go check it out, um, it's on my channel. And I have decorative brads. They're really cute animals and and things. And that you just go in on the um, on the video and claim what you want. All right, there we go. Two photos or two pictures hung on the wall. And we just have one item left. And that is a ticket stub. Now, what I forgot to do was leave room to put my prompts. And I'm going to have to cut this down. I can't cut straight. 
Couldn't do it if my life depended on it. So, cut this off. Uh, I'm going to cut this down and we'll put it down here at the bottom. So I've got that piece and then I want to cut out the hashtag. Let's cut a little off this bottom. So don't forget to leave your comments. And if you want to go back on other videos that I've done this month and put comments in, um, I think that's a win-win for everybody. Because for me, it helps, um, helps me get recognized a little more with YouTube. Because they do recognize comments. And... You know, it gives a little incentive. You might win. And it'll be a nice package of Happy Mail. Probably, oh, there may be some pre-made stuff in there. But I think a lot of it will be, you know, things that I've made. Um, one thing I'm getting ready to start on is um, handmade stickers. So I want to make my own sticker sheets that I can sell in my Etsy store and in my sales. And, you know, it's things like that that'll come in the Happy Mail. Maybe some fabric, maybe some lace, maybe some tags. Um, I don't know. Whatever strikes my fancy at the time, I'll throw in a Happy Mail bag for you. So um, that's just another way to you know, help me grow my channel. If you didn't, um, if you didn't, I'm sorry, I was just inking that up and I was off screen again. Um, if you didn't hear in one of my other videos, my, my word for this year is growth. Um, I want to grow all sorts of things. I want to grow my channel um, in several ways. You know, obviously subscribers, um, but also in the number of videos, the variety of videos, the frequency of videos. You know, I want to get to the point that I've got a real substantial channel. So that's one means of growth. And then again, like I said, in, in terms of subscribers. And so by offering the Happy Mail, free Happy Mail for comments, it's, you know, gives you guys a chance to win something and it gives me, you know, a chance to grow my channel because the more comments that you have on a video or on your channel, the more YouTube will recommend you out to other people. So it's a good way to grow. All right, the last thing I need is a ticket. And I've got some Tim Holtz. Well, this is a ticket stub. This is a ticket stub. I don't know if I have anything smaller. That one. This one down here, that looks interesting. Okay, so I have a few tickets to choose from. This one's a little too square, I think. I don't, well, not square, but it's too big. Um, I think right there is... A good place for that ticket. And then that gives me a nice full page. Now we can make this a ticket stub by tearing a portion of it off. 
and then it's a stub, not the actual ticket. So we'll do that. And we'll just put this right over here on the edge. So there you go, folks. Margaret Miller, week three. And again, if you want to find other week three, um, you know, pieces that other people have made, um, you can search on YouTube for hashtag 2023. Bring it up here a little bit. 2023 CWP3. So that's it. Another interesting spread. We've got a little ballroom scene going on. A couple of pictures on the wall, some interesting dancers, and one of the ticket stubs they use to get into the dance. So I hope you like it. Hope you enjoyed the, the video and the final product. I thank you for joining, and I will see you again next week for week four. Thanks for joining. Bye.